that you can share about rainwater harvesting? Is you got to have a source of water. Right. Now, what if you're in a village, which is in a very arid area, and there aren't wells uh, or sources of water? Most of these uh, villages all over the world, even in very dry parts of, uh, say, India, have a monsoon season where they have more water coming down than they can then possibly deal with, and it runs off. Uh, if you uh, design rainwater harvesting systems, that, that is, uh, each of these even thatched homes of people can catch water. The thatch tends to have dust on it, but you can then let the little the first rain uh, wash off. But then you then you have to design a really classy but effective storage system that is in closed storage. So uh, all of those systems were involved with all of that stuff at various places, and uh, uh, and in some places. There is enough water that you can get from a tube well or from a pond, uh, but but the technology we use, electrochlorination, is the cheapest way of killing bugs, uh, uh, fecal pathogens. But if the water has arsenic right. or 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 chemical uh, or mercury, then you have to do something more complicated. And so uh, when you get rainwater trap rain, rainwater and use it uh, for you can use it for both uh, income generation through drip irrigated horticulture and for uh, drinking water then there's a whole bunch of other methods that come into play to help with both these systems but water is critical when water is scarce you have to uh, promote ways of distributing that water to plants or to fish so that you every drop of water is leveraged to optimize income it generates right and so that's that's uh, that's sort of broad brush strokes but there's lots lots more about this stuff yeah you're in a very important area so so with spring health in conditions where water isn't very available you're catching rainwater off of various types of roofs. You're cleaning that water. You're using electrochlorination to do to make it into potable water. You're storing that water. Overage is being used on plants, and then that stored clean water is being distributed um, uh, through rickshaw drivers and jerry cans to households that are then paying for that water. And then those income streams combine to pay off that rainwater catchment system. Yes, and each, each business has to focus. You can't get too broad, uh, uh, but but you can't get too far afield from the main business. The main business of drinking water is you, you're providing drinking water to people in rural villages, right. and you're doing it through your partners who are shopkeepers. Now, uh, we hope to expand to 600 uh, shopkeepers uh, fairly quickly, but once you've built that distribution system, the real opportunity in the future is the marginal cost of adding additional transformative products once you've paid for the distribution system. So if you've got an auto rickshaw visiting every home in a village, you can add selected products, but you have to be disciplined in terms of the market, not just uh, from typical charitable uh, operations. Uh, the, the most likely things that you can distribute are fairly low in weight and volume and comparatively high value per uh, volume and weight. Right. So once you're already distributing, adding other, the marginal cost of adding other products. So if you, if you had a place, if you had an area that was desperately short of iodine uh, in their diet and needed uh, uh, iodine, iodized salt, for instance. You could distribute iodized salt or critical medicines or a whole bunch of other things. Yeah. And the cost of that, once you've co covered the cost of uh, last 500 foot distribution, yeah. 
uh, that, that then becomes an attract the next generation opportunity. So many opportunities. Um, is there any any final parting words, you wisdom that you'd like to share, or opportunities? Well, uh, don't be too much of a smart ass. I guess uh, I tend to be uh, uh, like that. But in the end, if you enter a process of continuous learning from the customers you're serving and change both the technology and the process and the, and the aspirational branding strategy on an ongoing basis, your odds of success go way up. I mean, I'm involved. This is one of three companies. The other two companies are involved in energy. And contrary to my expectation, all of them are still alive and well. I, I thought at my age, I'll start three. And if, if one or two of them survive, that can be a model for how to do this. Well, so far, all of them have survived. And so I'm uh, in a bit of a pickle trying to keep up with it all. But, <laughs> but I'm having a great time. Excellent. Thank you so much. I'm going to put up some links so people can learn more about what you're doing. Also a link to the Rainwater book for people that are interested. And uh, thank you so much for your time, Paul. Thank you. All right. See you soon. I've enjoyed it.